Should popularity matter when choosing a JavaScript framework? When I started building SaaS, I didn't think so. So I picked the underdog, Vue.js. I built four web apps, but kept hitting roadblocks. Meanwhile, others seem to move 10 times faster with React. React's popularity made me think it was overhyped. Then I got a YouTube comment that made me stop. Was I rejecting React based on fact or just feeling? So I ran an experiment, rebuild part of my first SaaS in React to see if it lives up to the hype. In this video, I share what I genuinely like and dislike about React. And by the end, I'll reveal whether React is overrated or if it's earned a spot in my tech stack. As I start this rebuild, there's not much I know about React, but there are three key things I do know it shares in common with Vue.js. Number one, they're both JavaScript frameworks that allow you to build HTML pages using components. Two, they both support TypeScript. And three, maybe this is the killer feature, but they can both automatically update the DOM when the state of a JavaScript variable changes. So with this minimal knowledge, it's time to jump in the deep end and rebuild my YouTube thumbnail comparison tool that lets users see what their upcoming videos are gonna look like on YouTube. But I'm not gonna rebuild the whole thing, just this tiny bit to show the thumbnail and title. And not only will I use React, but also Next.js, which turns React from a client only to a client and server framework. So I scaffold a new project ready to learn React from scratch. And I think there'll be plenty of chance to copy and paste from my existing project. Well, given the state of that Vue.js project, it might not be that easy. As I go through the React Getting Started tutorials, I realize that Vue and React are completely different beasts. You see, Vue components use the .vue file with a clear separation between code and the HTML template. React, on the other hand, uses the .tsx format, where code and HTML are mingled together in seemingly magical ways. Coming from Vue, it seems counterintuitive that you can't just use an attribute like vif to conditionally render an element. Instead, you have to use this more verbose ampersand or ternary format. My heart sinks as I realize there's no way this is gonna be a simple copy and paste job, partly due to the differences in the frameworks and partly due to the poor layout of my Vue.js project. I have to do it the hard way and convert my Vue components to React by hand, cursing the React development team frequently for choosing to use class name instead of the more common class attribute. But after much tweaking, I get this simple read-only thumbnail preview working. The next step is to go one level deeper into React to figure out how to save and load data dynamically and see if this framework lives up to its name. As I mentioned, Vue and React are both reactive frameworks, which means you can define a variable and anywhere that's used in the UI will update automatically when the value changes. For example, my thumbnail tool has this loading dialog that shows when you upload an image. So how do you define an is loading variable? In Vue, that's something called a ref, whereas in React, you use something called a useState hook. It's a function that returns you a value for accessing the variable and another function for setting its value. Now, I don't have a particular preference for either of these, but as I learn about other React hooks, like useEffect, which I use to fetch data from the back end, I find that the Vue.js composition API equivalent functions are a lot more intuitive. Anyway, I get to the stage where I can save and load the thumbnail and title from the back end, which is everything I set out to do with this rewrite. Although there are some things I much prefer in Vue, I feel like I've got the React basics down and I'm curious to continue learning. But the next part of my rewrite means figuring out how to serve content from different pages, which will take me into the world of Next.js and a whole new level of confusion. Now Vue.js also has a server-side framework called Nuxt, which I've used before in other projects and experienced countless issues. So I'm actually looking forward to trying out Next.js. Soon I learn there are two main things Next.js can do for me, server-side rendering and routing. You see, if you use plain React, components by default render in the browser. As soon as you add Next.js, components can also render on the server side. This is pretty confusing for me initially, but soon it starts to make sense and I just specify use client for any component I want to render in the browser. Next up, I look into Next.js routing, which automatically figures out routes based on the file structure. So now every collection of thumbnails is tied to a URL path with a specific ID. Seems really intuitive. Well, at this point, I've already rewritten all the main features of my app, and I'm faced with a tough decision of whether to stick with Vue.js or switch to the more popular framework. 
The thing is, frameworks like React aren't great because they're popular, they're great because of what that popularity brings. With Vue and Nuxt, I sometimes got stuck on problems for days. I opened GitHub issues that, to this day, have been completely ignored. With React and Next.js, I haven't hit a single issue that I couldn't solve by reading the error message. That's what popularity brings. Polish, reliability, and an ecosystem that just works. Is React overrated? Yeah, probably. But the community support, documentation, and tooling you get with React are hard to ignore. And yes, maybe I did want to be one of the cool kids. So I'm officially adding React to my tech stack. Now that you've seen both sides, which JavaScript framework do you prefer? Let me know in the comments.